Hey guys, Tom here, and uh, this is a video I've been thinking about doing for a little while. Um, I realized due to everything that I've done in the military, it would be too long for one single video. So what this is going to do is it's going to be broken down into a four-part video, uh, each part covering over a different aspect of my experience. Um, this first one will be covering over uh, my experience with basic training and uh, hope you guys will enjoy and stick around and watch the video but before we get started if you're new to the channel go ahead and click on that subscribe button go ahead and uh, click the bell notification to be notified of all my future uploads and also don't forget to click that like button and share with your friends and family Now, when I went to basic training for the Air Force, I was currently living in Texas at that time, uh, just outside of Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I ended up taking a bus ride down to Lackland Air Force Base, and that was about a four-hour ride from where I lived, and the whole process leading up to that moment was I was going to the recruiter, I had to take the ASVAB, which is a test that they use to determine what type of jobs they can most likely fit you into, what kind of jobs would work best for you, and to kind of help with that selection process. Now. I had gone to the recruiter and filled out the paperwork. I've done the ASVAB testing and I had to go up to a uh, hotel in the Dallas area and at that hotel what they ended up doing is they would take us out to another location and that's where they ran all the medical stuff. They would check you out with uh, seeing if there's any sort of health concerns, broken bones, flat foot, uh, they checked your range of motion for your legs, your arms, and pretty much just kind of screened you prior to. And I'd actually gone back to, uh, to that area a second time after the initial time. The, 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 the second time was to test to see whether or not I could become a linguist in the U.S. Air Force. And this area that they do that processing at is an area that they call MEPS, or the Military Entrance Processing Station. And they have everyone from all the branches showing up there. There's Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force, like all, all the military members go to the to go to a MEPS of some form based off of where they're enlisting from. But that's all the stuff that I had done prior to arriving at basic training. Now, the thing is, is when I got to basic training, uh, like I said, I had to go on a bus ride uh, down to Lackland Air Force Base to go through my uh, basic training for the Air Force. And initially upon arriving there, when the MTIs were initially getting us off the bus and forming us up and everything, I initially was having that thought process of what the hell did I get myself into? Did I make the right choice? Am I going to complete this? Am I going to succeed and be able to end up getting into the operational side of the U.S. Air Force. And I had a lot of doubts initially about myself when I first showed up at basic training and was questioning whether or not I, I would be able to accomplish that portion of the, uh, of the military training. Now at basic, they, they would focus a lot on different aspects. You'd 
study on customs and courtesies, on how you interact with different people, how you interact towards officers, how certain aspects of things are taken care of. You'd also train physically. Uh, they'd have us head out in the morning to do running, or we'd focus on core, or we would focus on upper body strength, and they would get taken care of in the morning, and then the rest of the day we would focus on studying from our handbook. Uh, we would focus on getting any sort of shots that would be needed throughout the process. We also sat through training for different things like uh, suicide risk awareness. Uh, we would sit through training on, on uh, how things would operate in the uh, operational side of the Air Force. And then we also did certain things like on uh, Sundays they would give us the ability to go to a religious service based off your religious preference. And then also while we were there, we were able to write letters to send home. And on the weekends, they would let us use uh, cell phones to place a quick call home and let the family know how we're doing. And we got to place an initial phone call when we first arrived to let our families know that we arrived at Blackland and that we got there safely and that there's no need to worry. There's always people ever sitting there talking about how basic training has, has changed. Like, uh, like when I got operational, there's people are sitting there telling me, oh, well, we didn't have cell phones when that we got to place calls to every weekend. They were like, we got to use the pay phones initially when we first got there and uh, and things like that but I feel like things are a little bit different now with the basic training than that as they were and on top of that too uh, I did have a time frame that I got in trouble in basic training I don't remember I can't remember what it was that I did I think it was something like so silly though that I, that it could have just been easily avoided and they were considering recycling me back now uh, when they recycle back what that means is you get removed from your current flight and you get put into another flight that is not as far as your flight as in training you end up spending a little bit more time at basic training but uh, they decided to let me stay with my flight and I graduated from basic training on time. Now toward the end of basic training they do put you through a physical training test and they see if you can meet the requirements for, basic, for the physical aspect of the U.S. Air Force. They want to test how, long, how fast you can run a mile and a half and how many push-ups and sit-ups you can get within a one minute time frame. And if you didn't meet the requirements, then you got put onto training for the physical aspect so they can test you again to see if you meet the requirements and can graduate on time. Now, I believe if you don't, grad, or if you don't meet those requirements, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what happens, but I know you can't graduate on time if you don't meet at least the minimum requirements for the uh, Air Force basic training. Now, at the beginning of basic training, I had a lot of doubts. I had a lot of concerns on whether or not my abilities would allow me to graduate. I was having doubts on whether or not I could graduate, and I was starting to have doubts on if I made the right choice. I was, I was seriously thinking, what in the world did I get myself into, and what in the world am I doing here? But through all that training, and we had to go to the fact too for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, had limits of time to eat. You couldn't sit down and take your time eating anything. You had to get to sit down, eat your food, drink your drink, and get up and moving. Now, when it came time to graduation, I was actually very proud of myself and 
pleased that I was able to put myself through what they tested us on at basic training. I was able to meet the requirements in order to graduate and move on to tech school. Uh, at the graduation, they have a thing called an airman's run that happens the day before. Uh, they form everyone up into flights, and they have all the family and friends that came to see the graduation standing on the side, and they're running uh, down the road, pretty much running past these uh, family and friends that are that are there for the graduation process. And then after that, I believe it was a base liberty where. Is either base liberty or we had to go back and we had to straighten up and get things situated. But I know the following ceremony after that was the airman's coin ceremony. And they had us all formed up, uh, had us, we were formed up by flights and the MTIs would go in between each line. And what they were doing is that each airman, they would stop, turn, and they would give them an airman's coin. And... After you got the airman's coin, you got put on base liberty, so you were able to hang out with your friends and family on base. But you, at the same time, had to be mindful of your customs and courtesies. And it was also a training base, so you had to be mindful of those that were still going through basic training at this point. And I actually slipped up. After the airman's run, I believe later on that day was the parade. And at the end of the parade, they put us on a base liberty with uh, friends and family there. And then on Sunday, I believe it was on Sunday, we had town pass where we were able to go to church with our friends and family. And then we were able to go out into town and walk around like the river walk and things like that in the uh, San Antonio area. I was surprised at how different I was at the end of basic training compared to at the beginning. Uh, I was really proud of myself for the things I was able to accomplish. I initially had changed from that person that had a lot of doubts in myself to the person that was proud of his accomplishments and realized that putting my mind to something I can accomplish and meet my goals and The whole way through basic training, I just, I would do what I could to keep my head low, I would do my job, I would study. Uh, they put us on additional jobs like uh, laundry crew and things like that. But I feel like that was the first major test that I put myself through on whether or not I can accomplish something that I wanted to do. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you are new to the channel, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. Also, click on that uh, notification bell to be notified of uh, future uploads. And also, don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. Smash that like button. And also, leave a comment down below. As always, enjoy life. Take it a day at a time. And I'll catch you all next time.